Hi there and welcome back. So in the previous video, we were looking at the thyroid and the parathyroid gland. Now let's take a look at the disorders as it relates to the thyroid and parathyroid. And they are very simple and many of us are aware of. So goiter is one of the popularly known in the daily routine of underwriting or in a clinical practice is the enlargement of the thyroid gland is labeled as goiter okay it could be simple non-toxic and why that happens because of the deficiency of the iodine and uh, the thyroid gland attempts to maximize the capture and use of iodine and that's why it gets enlarged and that's why the label as goiter it can be simple non-toxic um, it may occur during uh, those periods like a puberty, pregnancy, prolonged infections. So once those phase, phases in the lives are over, it may be recovered. And because those are the times when body demands more thyroid hormones. Now sometimes the simple goiter could be secondary to some other mechanisms as well. Um, the enlargement of the thyroid of a simple goiter may be smooth and symmetrical or it may be slightly nodular or cystic. And sometimes what happens there is overlap so the simple goiter's enlargement is sufficient to maintain normal thyroid hormone levels in the patient's blood but occasionally it may develop hypothyroidism. But the uh, iodized salt can be taken and it does work generally speaking. Uh, T4 replacement is the best source of uh, drug therapy to control the simple goiters. Um, it can be toxic and it can lead to uh, excessive thyroid hormones labeled as hyperthyroidism. Now there is a fancy name given like a diffuse toxic goiter. This is when a toxic goiter may show smooth generalized enlargement that is called diffuse toxic goiter. Nodular toxic is of course when you have nodules, so as the name indicates. Let's move on. So hyper is excessive, right? So overactivity or the hypersecretion leads to hyperthyroidism. The most common form is known as Graves' disease. And uh, of course, we can imagine that the metabolic rate in the cells is increased leading to um, possibly the nodular goiter. Uh, sometimes some um, protrusion of the eyeballs may occur as a result of this condition. And again, the hyperthyroidism, generally speaking, said to be autoimmune disease. Um, the cause is not clear and uh, the treatment could be the medication to replace the hormones uh, if needed surgery as your doctor may recommend. On the other hand we have a hypothyroid that is hyposecretion under activity right and it can be due to either surgery due to goiter uh, due to some treatment, radiotherapy, that may lead to the destruction of the glands, okay? Uh, that can also uh, be the reason for having hypothyroidism. And it may lead to constipation, mental sluggishness, all sorts of things. There are fancy names for the unique conditions as it relates to the hypothyroidism. So myxedema is advanced hypothyroidism in adulthood, period. 
so in the adulthood you have a hypothyroidism that is advanced that is level less mixidemia okay and things other things are obvious so you have a, a skin that becomes dry and puffy um, sometimes it may lead to the atherosclerosis or the uh, build up of plaque uh, in the arteries and recovery may be complete if thyroid, if thyroid hormone is given soon after the symptoms appear so it is obvious and another fancy name or the variation of hypothyroidism is when it happens during infancy and childhood and if it is extreme then it is labeled as cretinism so of course it can lead to lack of normal physical and mental growth skeletal growth is more inhibited uh, especially during the childhood so treatment is necessary through the thyroid hormone and it may reverse the uh, hypothyroid effects now dealing with thyroid it can it can have many other things like as you can imagine you, one could have an unfortunate cancer sometimes some tumors may be benign not growing um, there are popularly known as heart nodules and cold nodules generally speaking heart nodules are benign and the cold thyroid nodules can be benign or malignant but of course uh, the underwriters know that FNA or the uh, a fine needle aspiration biopsy is needed by the doctor to arrive at the final diagnosis. So, and there are many things in any from hypothalamus to pituitary gland to thyroid to parathyroid, and as we go down, there are a laundry list of disorders and diseases that is out there but we are just focusing on endocrine system and just um, scratching the surface um, let's move on to the parathyroid glands as we know the endocrine system it could be hyper overactive or hypo underactive it can lead to having too much calcium in bone or having too much calcium in blood Either, either scenario is not good and it can lead to um, some disorders that we can imagine. So, and there are fancy names given for those uh, diseases. But bottom line is, uh, if needed vitamin D uh, to restore the homeostasis, that's the key. Okay, so again, I would say that pituitary gland and hypothalamus, thyroid and parathyroid, just like fill partners and underwriters to ultimately serve the customers. So let's move on. We have still ways to go. We'll be back soon. Take care. Bye bye.